Hello and welcome to another lesson on the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video we're focusing on using the, sol the finance solver and some of the things we're going to look at are the inputs in the finance solver and what each of those variables mean on the screen. Uh, we're also going to use the finance solver to solve some problems using compound interest and payments. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to talk about how we can bring some of those variables from the finance solver onto the main screen in case you want to do any further calculations. Okay, so accessing the finance solver is run through the apps menu. So head to your apps button just below the X. And then you'll notice the very first thing that comes up there says finance. So if we go in there, um, we see there's a whole lot of things coming down here, but most of the stuff that, that students at school need to focus on with using the finance solver is just that number one, the TVM solver, and that stands for time value money. Uh, so if we go into there, so pressing enter to go into that one, um, we come up with this screen which has a whole lot of different variables on it. So I'm just going to run you through what each of these mean and then we're going to go through some examples where we uh, use these variables to solve some problems. So our N there, that stands for the number of periods. Uh, the I stands for the interest rate and that's as a percentage. So you input that value um, just as a percentage, there's no need to change it into a decimal. Uh, PV stands for the present value. PMT stands for payment. FV stands for the future value. P-Y and the C-Y, that stands for payments per year and compounds per year as well. And then you've got that very last thing down the end of the screen that says end and begin. So you'll find that most uh, questions that you need to answer, you'll just want to have that fixed on end. There is an occasion though when you would want to um, highlight the other option, which is begin. And that's when you're putting in money at the start of a compound period rather than at the end. But like I said, for the most of the times you want to have that end part highlighted. So to our first example, we're going to find the future value of $7,800 after it has been invested for four years at 5% interest per year. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward question because there's not a huge amount going on. So um, I'm going to start off first by putting in my interest rate, which was 5%. So if I go down here, I can add in a 5. Remember, we put that in as a percentage, so that 5% goes in there. Um, and I know I'm investing $7,800. Now I'm going to put that in as a negative, and the reason for that is because your TVM solder works on a cash flow in, cash flow out type basis. Um, so, how I like to think about this is if I'm investing this money, I'm putting that into the bank, which means that I no longer have access to it. So, that's negative money for me. When I withdraw it, it's going to be positive, and you'll see that our answer at the end becomes positive because that's that money we're getting back out again. Um, how I also like to set some up, if, if I'm if I'm like borrowing money, so if the bank's giving me money, uh, I would put that in as positive, but then the amount that I'd be paying back at the end would be negative, and again, that would be money that I no longer had. Um, so that's just how I kind of like to think about it, uh, and I find that makes it easier, but either the present value or the future value, one of those should always be negative. Okay, so uh, we didn't have any payments and we don't have any compounds per year. So we can leave that as is, um, or our compounds per year is just one because it's happening annually. Um, so I'm going to go back up to my number of year, in my N here, which is the number of periods. And so that's like how many times does that um, interest get calculated? So it's being calculated annually um, and just once a year. So four years and then once per year. Um, and in the TVM solder, you can do any calculations you like actually within each of these different variables. So I'm going to hit enter there. Um, and then I'm solving for my future value. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says FV. And then I'm going to go alpha solve. There you can see the little solve on top of the enter. And that's going to bring up my uh, future value. So in this case, after uh, if I invested that money for five for four years at 5% per year, um, I would eventually have after those four years $9,480. Okay, second problem. Now I'm investing $1,200 into the bank and it's paying me 3% per year uh, but compounding monthly. So when I withdrew the money, I now have $1,353. And so I want to find out how many years did I have it in the bank for. Okay, so now I can go back and start filling this in again. So again, it's 3% interest per year. So I'm going to put a 3 into that spot there. Uh, my present value, so the amount that I was investing was $1,200. And again, I'm going to put that in as a negative. 
because that's money that I no longer have. Um, again, no payments, but I know my future value ended up being $1,353. Putting that in, again, that's money I'm getting back from the bank, so that becomes positive because that's my money. Um, but I did have compounds per year, so my payments per year is going to be 12 because that money is being reinvested 12 times, uh, and same with the compounds per year being 12 as well. Okay, so now I wanted to find out how many years I had this in the bank for. So remembering our last one, we solved that by having the number of years times by the number of periods. So when I solve for this one, so I'm going to go alpha, enter again, I can see I end up with 48 there. So that's 48 periods altogether, but I know that it's being reinvested 12 times. So if I divide this number by 12 and press enter, I get four, so that's how many years I had that reinvested for. If I didn't want to do that division within the app, because it does sometimes look a little bit funny, the other thing I could do as well is bring up that uh, 48 into the main screen. So back in the main screen of my calculator, go back into the apps, back into finance, but now I'm going to go across to VARS on the side here, um, and I'm going to bring down that 48 from the number of periods. So I'm going to press enter on N, bring that up, and I can see there it comes up as 48. From there I can do my calculation, so I'm going to divide that by um, uh, by 12, sorry, I'm dividing by 4 to 4 with my answer, I'm dividing by 12, uh, and there I get my answer of 4, so it was 4 years altogether. Okay, so our last example, and this one is a little bit tricky, is we're investing $650 into a bank account that pays 5% interest per annum compounded quarterly. Uh, we're also adding a payment of unknown amount each quarter as well, and after 11 years my bank account now has $10,000 in it. So what we're trying to find is how much was that unknown payment that we were putting into that account every quarter. So, I'm going to get my finance solver up. Okay, and the very first thing I'm putting in, same as before, is my interest um, per annum. So that's 5% there. The next is that I'm going to put in my, my present value. That's the initial amount I put in my account. Um, and remember, we're putting that into the bank, so we no longer have it. So I'm going to put in negative $650. And then the future value, um, that's what we received back at the end, was $10,000. Okay, we've, we're making four payments per year, and there's also four compounds per year. Um, and right up here where our number of compounding periods, well, it's 11 years, and there's four per year. So all together then 44 periods. Uh, so we're solving for our payment amount. So we're going to have a look at this. Um, so alpha, and then enter to solve. And we can see there um, $152.56. Okay, well that's it from me um, and I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.